Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we are going to discuss the five races, gold, silver, bronze, heroic, and iron, of humanity, as they are laid out in one of the myths of Greek mythology. Let's get into it. In Greek mythology, there are three myths about the creation of humanity. One where the titan Prometheus is the creator, one involving a man and a woman who throw stones over their shoulders, and one in which there are five races created in succession through divine experimentation. We are going to quickly summarize the first two before spending the majority of the video covering the five races. In the first version, Prometheus and Epimetheus were tasked with the creation of humanity by Zeus. Prometheus, the intelligent brother, was hindered in this because Epimetheus, characterized by impulsivity and simple-mindedness, apportioned all of these survival traits to other animals, leaving humans without a defense mechanism when it was their time to be created. To compensate for this, Prometheus bestowed them with noble form, giving them the upright appearance of the gods, and he went up to heaven and used the sun to light a torch, bringing it back down to the mortal plane and gifting fire to humanity. In the second version, mankind had grown so wicked that Zeus and Poseidon used their powers in concert to flood the world. Brought to the brink of extermination, humanity was saved by Prometheus, who warned his son Deucalion of the impending disaster. Together with his wife Pyrrha, the daughter of Epimetheus and Pandora, Deucalion found salvation aboard a boat allowing the pair to ride out the seas rising up and consuming the continents. Eventually, Zeus relented and the water receded, and Deucalion and Pyrrha became the progenitors of the human race, but in unconventional fashion. The two of them threw stones over their shoulders, and each stone thrown in this way became a person, Deucalion's becoming men and Pyrrha's becoming women. With that covered, we are now going to spend the rest of the video going over the five races of humanity. The first humans created by the gods were the golden race of humanity, but this first race wasn't created by Zeus and the Olympians. Rather, it was created by Cronus and the Titans, a fact not expressly stated, but one that can be inferred from the race existing before the Titanomachy, the war between the gods and the Titans during the time Cronus was king of creation. These golden humans were radically different from ourselves, both in their constitution and in the lives they led. Their lives were idyllic, more so akin to those of the gods than regular humans, knowing neither hardship nor toil. Though they weren't immortal, the withering of age did not affect them, allowing them to live out their lives in a blessed state of youthful vigor and beauty. And when it was finally time for them to die, consciousness would gently leave them, like the comfortable embrace of irresistible sleep. They were beyond the reach of all suffering and privation, and as they were free of pain, sickness, and want, their days were dedicated to leisure and pleasure, feasting being one of the main activities that kept them occupied. Everything good that life offered was theirs to enjoy, and the earth was almost like their own personal horn of plenty. Crops and fruit-bearing plants of every kind growing of their own accord, needing only to be harvested. This golden race was eventually covered by the earth, but even after their time had passed, the world was never truly without them. For Zeus made them divine spirits, and in this transcendent form they became like guardian angels for mortal men, watching over them and bestowing wealth. The second human race to exist was one made of silver. They were inferior to the golden race in every way, and the lives they led compared to those of their antecedents were pitiable and pathetic. Children had to be cared for by their parents for 100 years, spending decade after decade in a state of dependence and frivolity. When they finally matured, their time as adults was ephemeral, lasting only a short while, and was characterized by a suffering engendered by wrongdoing and stupidity. As if driven by some perverse compulsion, they could not help but commit crimes against each other, and what's more, they were entirely useless, not performing their primary function, which was to offer sacrifices to the gods who presided over creation. Zeus retired this second race, 
and like the golden race that came before, they too were covered up by the earth. Only this time they weren't afforded the honor of being preserved in spirit form. The third human race to exist was one of bronze. Zeus made them out of ash trees. They were fierce and strong, and in temperament warlike and prone to wanton violence, the province of Ares. They are described as no eaters of corn, meaning they weren't an agricultural race, instead living off the land as hunters and gatherers. Here's the passage from Hesiod's Theogony that describes them. Their stern hearts being of adamant, unshapen hulks, with great strength and indescribable arms growing from their shoulders above their stalwart bodies. They had bronze armor, bronze houses, and with bronze they labored, as dark iron was not available. They were laid low by their own hands, and they went to chill Hades' house of decay, leaving no names. Mighty though they were, dark death got them, and they left the bright sunlight. After the bronze race too was covered up by the earth, Zeus created the fourth race of humanity, a heroic race of demigods. This generation of humanity was killed off in great wars, the most famous of which is the Trojan War, which was precipitated when Paris, a prince of Troy, took Helen from Sparta. For some of these heroes, death was a true end. For others, though, they passed on to live forever in paradise on the Isles of the Blessed Ones. The fifth and final race of humanity was the race of iron, the race that actually populates the earth for most of the events of Greek mythology. To them, toil and hardship were unavoidable realities of life, and the gods, capricious and perilous as they were, often made life even more difficult than it already was. Here's the description from Hesiod's Theogony. Soon they will cease to respect their aging parents, and will rail at them with harsh words, the ruffians, the ignorance of the gods' punishment. Nor are they likely to repay their aging parents for their nurture, fist law men. One will sack another's town, and there will be no thanks for the man who abides by his oath, or for the righteous or worthy man. But instead they will honor the miscreant and the criminal. Law and decency will be in fists. The villain will do his better down by telling crooked tales, and will swear his oath upon it. Men in their misery will everywhere be dogged by the evil commotions of that envy who exalts in misfortune with a face full of hate. The fifth race was one marked by degeneration. Sons were inferior to their fathers, daughters were inferior to their mothers, and movement along this downward spiral continued until humanity was so rife with wickedness that it came to be what people really worshipped was power. When this happened, human wickedness became manifest in its most egregious form, and the world became a place where might trumped all, and virtue and goodness were all but expunged. At this point, it looks like Zeus began to cut wickedness and immorality out of human society on an ongoing basis, much like someone does when they inspect their garden daily and rip out the weeds they find. Here's a passage from Hesiod's Theogony that describes this. But for those who occupy themselves with violence and wickedness and brutal deeds, wide-seeing Zeus marks out retribution. Often a whole community together suffers in consequence of a bad man who does wrong and contrives evil. From heaven, Zeus brings disaster upon them, famine, and with it plague, and the people waste away. The women folk do not give birth, and households decline, by Olympian Zeus's design. At other times again, he either destroys those men's broad army or city wall, or punishes their ships at sea. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.